Welcome to the Vampire Slayer Legacy. It's a rainy day in Newcrest and Jacob Lyle is settling into his new home. He couldn't bring himself to stay in the old house in Willow Creek anymore. He couldn't live with the ghosts of his past. But escaping his past is not that easy. As the sole survivor of his former household, he's taken on the responsibility of caring for Mimi, who misses her former master just as much as Jacob does. A knock. The welcome wagon is here. It's his neighbors, Lily Fang and her granddaughter Morgan Fang, and an alien named Liara Zeb, who appears to have been struck by lightning. Jacob wasn't a fan of the fruitcake they brought, but he gave it a try anyway and introduced himself to everyone. In speaking with Lily, he learned that she and Morgan are spellcasters, which instantly gave him pause. He's had a lot of negative experiences with supernatural sims, and his neighbors being spellcasters and aliens makes him uneasy about his choice to move to this neighborhood. When everyone left, Jacob gave Mimi a bath, and then he went outside for a quick workout. He's no slayer, so he could never hope to be as strong as Abby was, but he wants to do his part to keep humanity safe. After his workout, Jacob set out. He needs advice from an old friend. He can't live with the ghosts of his past, but he can visit them from time to time. In the Newcrest graveyard, he met up with the ghost of Abby Brewster, his former roommate and the last vampire slayer. He says he's there to chat. He says he misses her, and he asks her about the events leading up to her and Maverick's deaths. Abby doesn't think anything of it because Jacob was always such a gentle soul, and she mentions a vampire bar in San Myshuno called Fangs. But as the words come out of her mouth, she instantly regrets it. Location acquired. Jacob's demeanor immediately changed. He got what he came for. At the Newman apartment, Gregory has moved in. Everyone is mourning the loss of Maggie and Frank's parents, Ethan and Alyssa, and the abduction of their little brother Peter has everyone on high alert. Also, it's party day, so my Sims are going to randomly celebrate all day, especially Frank, because he has the party animal trait. I'm trying to tell the story of a grieving family here, and they keep autonomously giving toasts, drinking martinis, and playing with noisemakers. It's my own fault for making this holiday, really, but I'm choosing to ignore it. After chatting with Gregory and Frank for a bit, Maggie got up to practice fighting vampires. Frank summoned Bonehilda to clean the apartment, and Gregory stepped outside to experiment with the cauldron. Andrew isn't particularly close with his father, but decided to join him outside and pitch in with his potion research. Magic and potion making is really the only thing that they ever seem to bond over. Andrew lost his mother when he was just a baby, and Gregory didn't know how to be an emotional caregiver, so magic is the only thing that he ever taught his son. Magic is the only life Andrew has ever known. When Maggie went outside to craft some wooden supplies, Gregory went back inside. He examined his own urn, proof that he had died. The world thinks he's dead. The Spellcaster Supreme thinks he's dead. Good. He has the element of surprise. He can use that to his advantage. An idea comes to mind. A way to get Peter back from the Reddings. He goes outside to check on Maggie, who has just finished building her vampire slaying tools, and he tells her that he needs to run an errand. He says not to leave the apartment until he returns. On his way out, Andrew asked where he was going. Come with me, Gregory said. We're going to ask for help. I'll explain on the way. Arriving in Newcrest at an old, decrepit house, Andrew is confused. Trust me, Gregory assures him, this is the place. The Supreme has many enemies, and this is where we will find the strongest ones. Inside, they met Glenda Green, a powerful spellcaster whose reputation precedes her. Glenda is a duplicate of the Supreme whose body was twisted and mangled by magic, the result of a spell gone wrong. Where Rachel sees herself as a paragon for good, despite the actions of her family and herself, Glenda is openly and outwardly evil. But nonetheless, she's just as powerful as the Redding Witch, and she's the leader of the Vengeance Coven, a group of witches who openly oppose the so-called Supreme and her assumed control over the magic realm. Gregory pledges his allegiance to Vengeance Coven, and Andrew finds follow suit. Both are accepted as new members, but only if they survive initiation. When the Vengeance Coven gathered, the first thing that happened was a fire. One of the club activities is to cast spells, and so naturally that means everyone starts casting the fire spell. Fun times! Andrew extinguished the first fire, but someone else immediately set the porch on fire, and another fire started in the living room. This is too much! I ended the gathering. While trying to put out the fire in the living room, Andrew caught on fire, but ultimately he did put the fire out. Gregory tried to repair the fire damage, but his spell backfired, and that started yet another fire. I'm so sorry, Glenda. These guys came here to join your coven and ended up causing four fires in your house. That can't leave a good first impression. I think it's time to remove 
remove cast spells as a club activity moving forward. After restoring the house back to its pre-fire state, Gregory went home, but Andrew stuck around to learn more about the coven. Multiple members of this coven are ghosts, including Morgan Ember and Shelley Fang. He wonders what the Supreme could have done to offend them so much that they would seek vengeance after death, but he didn't ask. Instead, he explained his situation, how his little cousin was abducted by vampires, and about his aunt and uncle's demise. Glenda asked for some time to prepare a plan, and Andrew was on his way. He was tired when he got home, so he snuck off to bed while everyone else had dinner. Since it's late at night and everyone is home, Maggie went out for a vampire hunt. The apartment is getting a bit crowded. Andrew and Gregory have to share a bed now. Frank stayed up waiting for Maggie to return, practicing his medium skills. While she was out hunting, Maggie encountered a group of vampires. She chose to fight them, but they were too strong and overpowered her. Luckily, she was able to get away and outrun them, but this left her exhausted and in dire need of a shower. The vampire, Ren Redding, has just moved into his new home in Glimmerbrook, an abandoned castle near his sister's place. The former occupant was a spellcaster who vacated the premises under mysterious circumstances. Ren left the Forgotten Hollow because he doesn't agree with what his brother Reginald is doing. He understands the need to keep a sim locked up sometimes. He's been there himself, but making that child into an orphan and then taking him hostage is going too far. Reginald's obsession with Maggie and her family has gotten out of control. Ren cannot condone it. He invites his sister over. If he can't convince Reginald that what he's doing is wrong, maybe Rachel can. He explains the situation to her. He tells her what their brother has done. He explains to Rachel that Reginald has taken the brother of the girl that Ren had brought to her in the past, a fact that piques Rachel's interest. She promises to handle it. While she's there, Ren asks if he can feed on her. He's been drinking nothing but plasma pouches for weeks and needs a proper meal. Rachel agrees, and her spellcaster blood gives him a boost. She sets out for Reginald's mansion in the Forgotten Hollow. Once inside, she locates her brother and demands to know where the boy is. Reginald is annoyed that his brother involved Rachel, but he tells her what she wants to know. He knows better than to challenge her. After all, she created him. The boy is in the basement, he yields. Downstairs, Rachel finds Peter Newman locked in a holding cell. He's mourning his parents. He still has their urns with him. She uses magic to enter his cell without opening the door. I can take you away from here she promises. Come with me. He took her hand and instantly they were transported to her tower in Glimmerbrook. Welcome to your new home, Rachel proclaimed. Forget everything you think you know. Your new life starts now.